Well, just as an actor, there were certain emotional things that people were going through in the movie that on some base level I could understand. You know, there's just this little small clump of human emotions of jealousy, envy, you know, pride, whatever they are. So it was interesting to see them. And also that, that creepy edge was all through it. And that was uh, it's interesting when someone can really write that. That's like a d different dimension. In Picasso's day, people just didn't understand what he was doing there. How could that be a woman's face? How could that be a portrait of someone? But some artists have really different visions. And, you know, this is the medium that they paint. And sometimes you move around like a doll in their dollhouse, you know. It's interesting. When you work on a David Lynch movie, you are in his world, and you're trying to understand his image, his vision. And, you, and I don't always get it. But I know whatever it is, it's, it's interesting and it's important. When I would talk to David about the differences between these women, you know, he has very distinct feelings about who they are. So I thought, well, I could play one very different than the other one. And that could be really exciting as an actor to really change the vocal quality of each and change all these, the way they spoke, the way they moved themselves. But he kept saying to me, they are the same person. That they are the same person. So, um, I mean, you're just trying to figure out your way in there. It's a, it's a balancing act. When I first read the script, my concept of it was um, jealousy can overwhelm a person. And I think that Fred's character is incredibly jealous. Although he's a man of the 20th century and in a way, a hip man on the street, and he knows what's happening in the world. So I don't think he would be comfortable expressing his jealousy, because he would feel like he was barbaric. They have a very dishonest relationship. I mean, I think she's in a way very fearful of him. She doesn't know what he's really capable of. He doesn't want to admit who he really is. So. They have a stalemate relationship where it's almost like in their marriage you feel that the word divorce is just constantly between them. But it's almost like a standoff of these two animals. Who's going to leave first? Well, first I thought, am I a figment of someone's imagination? So how am I supposed to get into someone's head and figure out what is that, you know? Because you already have a boundary. You already have a line of demarcation because there's a man writer, a man director. So what is a man's idea of a woman? So you've got to figure out, well, each man's idea of a woman is different, but what is this man who's directing this movie's idea of woman? Or, there's also a lot about the sexual power and prowess of woman and the destructive quality of that. He directs musically. He'll listen to certain kinds of music in one earphone while he'll listen to the scene and watch it. He already has his music picked out for different parts, and he writes music himself. So in a way, he'll talk about the way he directs much, mostly is musically. He'll say, slow it down, take your time. We'll be driving the car in the middle of the desert, and he'll say, you know, I guess you should go about, I don't know, 50. You'll know when you click into that place that feels right. And you do when you hit that because the speedometer doesn't work or whatever, and you do feel when it's the right place. It's just hard to find that metronome, what beat it's ticking at, because it's very specific for him.